What's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here with another episode. And in this one, we're going to break down my top 25 overall players for the 2020 fantasy football season. Now, it is only the very beginning of May, so we still have lots of time to change things up. But with the draft being over now, felt like we needed to kind of update those rankings. Still a long time to go, though, so continue to check back. These rankings, we'll update them and do more videos down the line. And trust me, tons of content to come. But if you're looking for a little bit more football in your life and a whole lot of knowledge, then I highly recommend that you pre-order our 2020 fantasy football draft guide this thing is going to be absolutely jammed packed for the 2020 season so much information last year it was almost 500 pages this year i guarantee it's going to be over 500 pages and it's only 20 bucks and don't worry if for some reason we don't have football we will in 2020 we're going to have football but if for some reason we don't you're going to get this draft guide for 20 uh, for 20 bucks and we're going to give you a free one in 2021 so you're not going to miss out on anything if for some reason the the season doesn't happen you're going to get double the content for the price so if you are wanting to win a fantasy football championship in 2020, I highly encourage you to go over to the fantasyheadliners.com and pre-order that draft guide today. It's going to be as we like to say hashtag hella fire. But let's jump into it. Let's start talking about our top 25 players heading into the 2020 season. There might be some names that shock you on here, and trust me, we're going to jump more into this. Jake and I are going to be breaking down each specific position. So, Going to fly through these names here, give you a little bit of information for each one, why I think they are going to belong there. And if you're looking for a more detailed breakdown and to see what Jake has, make sure you check back for position-specific videos. Number one overall for me, Saquon Barkley. Ended up going with him over Christian McCaffrey just because I think Judge is going to run, 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 and run the football in New York this year. I think he's going to do that. Daniel Jones, you have to hope he kind of takes a step forward, but if he does have any inconsistencies, Barkley's going to be the consistent factor there. And there, there's just going to be a whole lot of room for him to run. They have a lot of weapons on the outside to help keep things off balance. If Evan Ingram is healthy, I, I just look for, and most importantly, Darius Slayton. And I talked about Darius Slayton a lot before the season last year and why I liked him for uh, for value, for Saquon Barkley. Well, here we go. Okay, This is why, because he's going to be able to stretch the field, and now Barkley gets him for the entire season. So really like Saquon Barkley. Nothing against Christian McCaffrey. Maybe he just doesn't see all the same workload that he saw last year. And number three, Josh Jacobs. I absolutely love Jacobs this season. He's going to see an increased workload in the passing game, and now he has weapons there at wide receiver to help out, especially Henry Ruggs. I don't expect Henry Ruggs to light up any anything anytime soon. I think he's going to be a decent wide receiver in the NFL, but the main thing he does is he's going to stretch the field and pull defenders down the field, leaving more room for everybody else. That's why Josh Jacobs goes at number three for me. Michael Thomas after that, the most consistent wide receiver you can possibly own. He's going to have the volume. He's going to have the consistency. Everything you absolutely want in a wide receiver one. And then Joe Mixon at number five. I love this offensive line. Um, maybe not love, but I love where it's going. They're going to be much improved this year. A couple of things to note. Number one, Jonah Williams, last year's number one over our number one pick, first round pick for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. He's going to be back and healthy this year. They've made some additions through free agency and in the draft. And a guy by the name of Michael Jordan, one of their guards, he was the youngest player on the roster last season. He was kind of forced to step in with some injuries that they ended up having, and he didn't play too bad. He did have some inconsistencies because of injuries himself, but he's the guy that could step up and be a big addition for them this year if he's fully healthy all season long. This offensive line is going to be a lot better. Joe Burrow is a great prospect. He's going to be slinging the ball all over the place. They have tons of weapons. Expect Joe Mixon to have a huge season this year. Absolutely love him. Let's jump to 6 through 10. Dalvin Cook, uh, Dalvin Cook coming in at number 6. I love Dalvin Cook. I do. Just a little bit lower in the rankings this year. Nothing against him. Stefanski is gone. Okay, He is out, uh, and now he is with Cleveland. So maybe there's a little bit in the game change there. But I don't think a whole lot. Delvin Cook, he's going to be leaned on quite a bit. The only thing that concerns me, will we see more Alexander Madison? We saw Cook kind of break down at the end of last season. Does Madison come in a little bit more this year to keep 
cook healthy. Devontae Adams at number seven. I talk about this with volume all the time. Sometimes all the volume isn't good volume. Just because you're getting a ton of volume doesn't necessarily mean you'll do much with it. Devontae Adams can. Yes, we have the hashtag here on the channel, hashtag never funchess, but I think Funchess will do just enough to kind of help Adams out. They do still have some wide receiver weapons there, so even though it was not good for Aaron Rodgers that they didn't draft a wide receiver, it's still good for Devontae Adams, and of course, because they're going to be running to such, uh, going to such a run-heavy scheme, when Aaron Rodgers does sling it, I think it's going to be quality volume going towards Devontae Adams as well. That's why he is my wide receiver too. Zeke Elliott coming in after that. Only problem with Elliott this year is maybe some of that ceiling is limited. He's going to have a, a, a really high floor though. So because of how much room he is going to have to run, no one's going to be able to stack a box against him. It's not going to be able to happen because there's so many weapons there for Dallas now. And Dak Prescott does a such such a good job with the RPOs, the run pass options. I just I love his floor this ceiling just so, or this year, but just that ceiling is going to be a little bit lower because we're going to not have nearly as many passing attempts going towards him, not, not as many targets for Ezekiel Elliott. So ceiling is a little bit limited for me. Austin Eckler, though, I mean let let's face it, the guy is going to have another huge season this year. I don't mind Joshua Kelly. I think he's going to be a good addition for them. I think he can help a little bit. But don't forget, Melvin Gordon took a ton of carries, a ton of targets last year. And Eckler still had a running back one season. Expect him to do the same with even a little bit larger workload this year. He certainly isn't going to lose any. And Justin Herbert is, is going to be a lot better than Tyrod Taylor. Miles Sanders coming in at number 10. I love Miles Sanders. I love what this offense is going to do in Philadelphia this year. I'm very, very excited for it, and you should be excited for it as well. I don't want to give away too much, though, because I just wrote an article on Patreon about Jalen Rager and why he's my rookie wide receiver one, and it talks about this scheme and what they're doing there. So make sure you head over to Patreon. It's only five extra dollars a month for you to get all of our exclusive content on Patreon, including including our new podcast that we're going to be dropping here in the next week and lots of articles. We've been posting new articles almost every other day right now so if you want even more fantasy headliners go over to patreon.com there's a link down below five extra dollars a month is going to get you access to all of that so that's why i love miles sanders i don't want to give it all away though so head on over there and check it out let's take a look at 11 through 15 now uh, 11 through 15 julio jones man julio jones is just the the unsung hero every single season julio jones is consistently out there performing what are we going to get for touchdowns, though? That's the only thing. But Todd Gurley is a welcome addition in the backfield. It's really going to help balance this offense out quite a bit. Calvin Ridley taking another step forward there. Yes, they got rid of Austin Hooper, but that's okay. They've got Hayden Hurst now. Hayden Hurst should step in and do a fine job as a receiving option. So Julio Jones should have another big year. Even without those touchdowns, this guy is consistently a top 10 and a top 5 option every single year at wide receiver. Tyreek Hill after that. A full season with him and Patrick Mahomes this year should equal huge numbers as usual. I expect big things out of him. Big plays and volume to go along with it. Chris Godwin, now he is going to be a volume monster this year. Yeah, maybe he doesn't get as many touchdowns as he did last season. And if that happens, that's okay because we know Tom Brady loves to work with his slot receivers. That's why Godwin in the slot is so dangerous this season. I mean, he is going to be pelted with targets continuously, continuously. And defenses aren't just going to have to, the, to focus on them. And one thing, good thing about being in the slot as well is, yeah, you may might have to face a slot corner that's good, but you're not going to have to face like the cornerback one. You're not going to have to face that shutdown corner. So there's not going to be a whole lot of guys that are going to be able to shut down Chris Godwin this year. And with Mike Evans still being there, Gronk there now, tons of receiving options that no one's going to be able to like focus in on Godwin. They're not going to be able to double team him at any point in time. He's going to have a lot of room to run. Alvin Kamara coming in at 14. I am a little bit lower on Kamara than the consensus right now, and it's plain and simple. Emmanuel Sanders and Jared Cook. Sanders being there, him and Ted, got, uh, Ted Ginn are not the same player. Ted Ginn is a guy that stretches the field a little bit more. Emmanuel Sanders is going to see some of those intermediate to short targets that Alvin Kamara has gotten used to the past couple of years. 
And we have to remember, Jared Cook now has a full season under his belt. He got a lot, lot, lot better at the end of last season. So because of that, I expect some of that to carry over. And those two guys could take some of those targets away from Kamara. And who knows, this is going to be a really good Saints team. Maybe if they're up big late in the, uh, late in the second half or at any point in time, Maybe they run with Latavius Murray a little bit more just to make sure they don't get Kamara banged up. It could end up happening. Odell Beckham Jr. at number 15. Huge bounce back season coming for Odell Beckham Jr. If you don't trust Baker Mayfield, I get it. But if Baker Mayfield is half is is 50 percent better than he was last year that's still going to equal a big year for odell beckham jr he says he's healthy he says he's ready to roll and he says he's ready he's got a chip on his shoulder so i expect him to have a big season i'm going to roll with him this year deandre hopkins coming in at number 16 again just a little bit lower on him than most others just because with deandre hopkins again concern over meshing with Kyler Murray is that offensive line going to be a problem there is there just too many options now whereas when he was with uh, Houston he was for sure locked cemented that number one a hundred percent and and here he, he might have to fight with some targets so we'll end up what we'll see what happens with DeAndre Hopkins I like DeAndre Hopkins I'm just a little bit worried that maybe some of the volume is a little bit lower than what we've been used to in the past Derek Henry, now we start getting into the running backs where, you know, yes, they're going to have good volume, but it's basically all going to be on the ground. Same goes for Derek Henry. Same goes for Nick Chubb. Both of these guys are going to see a lot of volume, but a majority of it's going to be on the ground. So they're going to have to, number one, be super effective and efficient with it. But number two, some of that ceiling, again, comes down just a little bit. Love Nick Chubb, but Kareem Hunt, you could see last year, took away some of that pass catching work. So Chubb still, for me, is kind of locked in there as being a, a pretty decent option, a low end running back one. George Kittle, first up, our first tight end. My tight end one in these rankings. I love George Kittle this year. They've added players there, playmakers to kind of help take it the, take the focus away from them. And of course, that running game is going to be super solid. So George Kittle has a lot of upside every single week. Patrick Mahomes, my quarterback one this year, yes, over Lamar Jackson. But give me a full season of Patrick Mahomes again. Just think that Lamar Jackson just... Uh, just a tiny step back, just a tiny step back, and that allows Patrick Mahomes to jump in there and be our quarterback one. Travis Kelsey, his tight end one is my tight end two. Travis Kelsey, absolute stud. Again, huge ceiling. So many options to go there in Kansas City. You can't help but just every single week have a feeling that Travis Kelsey can blow up. He will, again, kind of be that first option for Patrick Mahomes. Juju Smith-Schuster, he is up here in the top 25 for me. You get, he gets Ben Roethlisberger back. They did make some additions at wide receiver in the draft with Chase Claypool. They brought in Anthony McFarland in the draft as well, which you guys are going to hear a lot more about Anthony McFarland as the season or offseason goes on. So they have a lot of weapons there, and I really think Juju bounces back because I think we're going to see James Washington, Deontay Johnson, and then we could see Chase K Claypool playing on the outsides. We can put Juju Smith-Schuster back into the slot where he was comfortable the first couple of years while he was there in Pittsburgh. He's going to be really, really good. He's going to bounce back, so make sure you buy into him if you can early on. Lamar Jackson at 23, my quarterback too, not far off from Patrick Mahomes. Again, just a little step back this year. They have so many running backs now, so many options. You have to wonder if maybe they're going to, you know, Pull back his his rushing attempts just a little bit. Cooper Cup, number twenty four. The last time we did rankings, uh, last time we did rankings, Brandon Cooks was still there in LA. He is now gone. That's just good things for Cooper Cup. Good things for Robert Woods. Quite honestly, these two are going to be really really close for me. Slight nod to Cup right now because of the the red zone targets. And Kenny Galladay, huge playmaker for Matthew Stafford there in Detroit. I mean, he does it all. I mean, he can he can make some moves after the catch. He can go deep down the field. He can be a red zone guy that can go up and get the ball. DeAndre Swift. I know I didn't love the DeAndre Swift, uh, the DeAndre Swift dra draft pick when it happened, and I kind of eh, was was skeptical of it. But from a pure fantasy football standpoint, he does a lot. He's a lot better than Carryon Johnson. Hopefully now the run game will command a little bit more respect than it has in the past. If that happens, then things are even more open for Kenny Galladay moving forward. Well, there you have it. Quick, super. Sweet, done, out of the way, got through it. Top 25 players for 2020 in fantasy football. 
Don't forget, though, we're going to break down each position moving forward. So even after you watch this, keep an eye on the channel over the next few days. Jake and I are going to be doing those episodes together. So you're going to get his take on some of these players, and you're going to get some of these same takes again of why I really like them. But right now, my top 25 players moving forward this offseason for 2020 Fantasy Football. Don't forget, pre-order that draft guide if you haven't done so yet. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, become a part of Headliner Nation today, like the video, and comment below. Anybody that you're a little bit higher on, anybody that you're a little bit lower on, but if you are, give me a reason why. Tell me why you would move somebody up or down in these rankings. Really appreciate it, Headliner Nation. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one.